from Vilcabamba, Ecuador. I'm here spending the next 24 hours looking to see what there is to do in Vilcabamba. Now, one of the things that I know is very popular here is the underground hallucinogenic drug, St. Peter's. Not interested in that. Also, there is uh, Cerro Mandango, which is a beautiful mountain here that you can climb. It takes like, I don't know, six hours. Definitely not doing that either. However, there are some other things to do. This valley is known as the Valley of Longevity. A lot of people here live to be over 100 years old. However, just because of the economy, a lot of young people moved out of the area. Yet, in 2008, uh, International Living Magazine named Cuenca and some surrounding areas as great places to retire in for expats. So this has become a big expat town. I am not really a fan of visiting expat towns. However, I'm going to keep an open mind because I've heard it's a great place to visit. So we're going to spend the day, but we're going to start with breakfast. So in Vilcabamba, along the main square, apparently there are a lot of really great French and American restaurants, mostly catering to expats. However, I did not come to Ecuador to eat American or French food. I want Ecuadorian food. So we decided to go to the market, very clean. You walk through the menders to the back where you get to the comedores. Starting off with a little bit of Hugo Verde. Um, talk to Gloria about this. This has celery, parsley, aloe, cucumber, and a little bit of pineapple juice. Mmm, so fresh. I love just getting vegetables in a glass. And it is almost all organic. She said that, not because she buys organic, just the vegetables around here are mostly organic. That cost me $1.50. We are also trying a classic Ecuadorian breakfast food called tigrillo. That is mashed green plantains, quesillo cheese, which is fresh, and then egg. So we're trying two different plates. One is the beef short ribs tigrillo. The other one is seco de pollo, which means dry chicken. Seco de costilla. So ribs, again, in a sauce, even though they say it's seco, which means dry. So I actually thought the ribs would be tough, but it's not. It's really tender. It's very good. Mmm! Really good. You do have to be careful with Tigrillo because it is devastating. You have the starchy green plantains, the protein from the eggs and the cheese and then the meat. If you eat this, you are definitely not going to need to eat anything until lunch. And even then, you might want to take a late lunch. But that's okay. I think we're going to walk around. But I'm not going hiking. Okay, so we've only been here for a couple of hours, but I can already see why this region attracts so many new people. It is warm, but there's a breeze, which is very lovely. Lots of healthy food options, which is different. If you're gonna live somewhere, you definitely wanna be able to have flavors from home. Um, people here have been really nice so far, and I think it's quite affordable. Five minutes in, maybe seven minutes, we're in somebody's neighborhood. We have not seen a waterfall or anything that looks like it would have a waterfall to be that steep. So we're just looking at people's houses. We're gonna walk up this hill and see, it looks so dry here. I don't know how there's gonna be a waterfall. Okay, so I did climb to the top and this is what it looked like. Andreas tried to tell me that it would be good for drone, but it was so brown. So, Andreas told me I was one of the worst travelers to come to a place I didn't like say this. That. You said you were the problem. No, I said you're one of the problems. Of the oh, I'm one of the nightmares. Poor guides, Poor guides coming to a place like this, which is known for hiking outdoor adventure number one i am in a dress and also even though he told me like 10 times to bring hiking boots to ecuador i refused 
and I'm just wearing sneakers. But I also said I don't want to hike. I just want to walk flat. I just want to trek. Maybe I'm part of the solution because I'm going to show you the other things to do. We just had a lovely flat walk. No waterfall and now we're going to do, we're going to have ice cream. Let's go for ice cream. <laughs> Dozen steps, so we stopped at Zarza Brewing Company. It's been around since 2013, right off the main square. This is the third brewery I have seen today so far. I am having the agave wheat ale. Guys, this is 7.5%, so I'm probably not gonna drink the whole thing. It's an amber color, but actually tastes quite light kind of citrusy with a little bit of bitter taste on the end but not too much the owner is American and he has these crazy photos of Putin on the inside as a joke to one of his friends who's Russian it's funny the menu here they do have a food menu there's some Mexican there's some Tex-Mex there's some like American some Latin American there's some Argentinian there's a lot of different stuff on the menu what's interesting about this is that it uses agave and this is my fourth time to Ecuador and I am only now just recently understanding how important agave is in Ecuador. We always think of it as mezcal in Mexico, but here they make their own drink, which is a juice called pulque, which is known to be very nutritious. And say you've got like some bratty kid and they won't eat their veggies, you usually give them some of this, the pulque, not this. So this is the area just outside the room. Bathroom is pretty standard, so I'm not gonna show that. TV there if you wanted to. Swimsuit later, sit in that. And then we have a little patio here that overlooks the brewery and restaurant. Two pools, here's another one. These views, the mountains are amazing. When we were in Loja, the first thing we did was go to the Wilco tasting room and really liked the beer. I posted on Instagram and they asked if we wanted to come for a tour of the brewery while we were here in Vilcabamba. And so that was in and of itself a great idea. But then when they found out we didn't have anywhere to stay, they offered to host us at their hotel as well. So in Southern Ecuador, if you stay at a hosteria, it means there's also a pool and it tends to be in like natural areas. So people want to go hiking for the day, go into nature, and then they want to come back and just relax by the pool. And so this spot has a brewery, a restaurant, a fantastic hotel. Sometimes they just stay in places like in Loja that are clean and central. And then you stay in places like this with, look at this view. This is an amazing place. It's so gorgeous here. I love all the natural wood and the red tiles for the roofs. Why am I only staying one night? I would love to stay longer. So we did a tour of Wilco with Alan and it was great. He has so much enthusiasm and energy and it's just so nice to meet people that are like passionate about what they do. Um, what was interesting because I've done many brewery tours, he was explaining local flavors and also local preferences. So um, a lot of the flavors they're starting to experiment with but they are only one of two artisanal breweries that actually produce beer in cans and that is because the culture in Ecuador is that you buy beer in a small bottle or a big bottle but you return it so when you go to buy more beer you return the bottles and you get more beer so if you do that with cans it's like one and done so we've taken three of these new beer that they gave us to the river which is just next door and the cool thing is they actually believe this is one of the sources of longevity here. So the oldest person I believe has lived to 132 years old and they believe that if you dip your toes in or swim in it that you will live to a long age. 
this river is right beside us and a lot of locals believe that this is the secret to longevity. You can see someone here just in the water in their hair and hands. They believe that if you dip your toes in or you swim in it, I guess the more water you get the better, that you will live for a long age. First up, the blackberry red ale. It's also called mora here. Mm. It's good. Sometimes when you see something that says blackberry, you think, oh, it's gonna be like way too sweet. This is actually quite good. 6%. Guys, I'm gonna live forever because my dress got wet and my feet have been in this river for so long. Today, I just feel so thankful and lucky Earlier, I was kind of feeling a little bit tired, out of sorts, and then I just looked at where we were and I was like, wow, this is beautiful. And just to come down to the river, have some beers with such a good friend, and just chat about like whatever and enjoy it, it's just an amazing day. Such a good time, until I flew my drone into the water. I didn't fly it into the water, but there was this big branch that went up and down and up and down. I tried to move my way around it, and this thing ended up in the water. So I've taken out the battery. I'm just gonna let it dry. Maybe pray. We're like in the country for praying, right? You're from Cuenca, you're good Catholic. So pray for me pray my and my drone. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm gonna try to air it out today. Thankfully, we got it maybe 15 seconds after we went into the water, and we'll see. Fingers crossed, otherwise, I do have insurance, but I think it'll take up to seven days. All right, we're back at the Hostaria. The light here is gorgeous. We're just gonna have a drink out on the patio because it's Thursday. Um, the restaurant isn't open, so we're going to head back into town, but until then, we're just going to enjoy this. The weather is perfect here. I actually now see why so many people move here. It's like warm, but windy, but arid. This is the kind of place that you could fall in love with for sure. Mm -hmm. 